Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter and this is lecture video 8. We are starting chapter 3 and this is part 1. So in the last chapter we talked about frequency tables, relative frequency tables, cumulative frequency tables, histograms, uh, relative frequency histograms, and ogive which is a line chart of a cumulative frequency, bar charts for qualitative data, and Pareto charts, which are a special type of bar chart, <clears throat> time series charts, and now I want to remind us of the difference between a parameter and a statistic. A parameter is a characteristic about a population. So remember that the P with parameter goes with the P of population, and the S of sample goes with the S of statistics. So if we're talking about <clears throat> the range, if we're talking about the population, it's a parameter. If we're talking about a sample, it's a statistic. So <clears throat> the same characteristic can be applied to a population, which is a parameter, or to a sample, which is a statistic. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about uh, measures of central ten tendency, measures of variation, and we're going to uh, talk about how those uh, adequately define most data sets and distributions. So if we have those two measures, then we usually understand enough about our data or our um, distribution to make some decisions. Okay, so in this video we're going to discuss measures of central tendency, our mode, median, mean, trim mean, and the weighted mean. So I want you to be able to really understand uh, that the center and variation are really important in being able to describe a distribution or a data set. And I want you to grasp uh, how um, we can describe the center of a distribution or data set using these measures, the median, the mode, the mean, and some modifications of the mean called the trimmed mean and the weighted mean. So to first understand about these two measures, let's talk about the mean heights of males in the US and that happens to be right at 5 foot 9 inches versus the mean height of males in the Netherlands which happens to be right at 6 foot even. <clears throat> so if I'm a male in the US and my height is say 5'10 and I go and visit the Netherlands and I know that the mean height is 6 foot I'm going to uh, unconsciously or subconsciously expect that all the males are taller than me. But of course that's not exactly true necessarily. <laughs> so another measure besides the mean or the average, which is a center, might be the standard deviation. So it turns out that it's approximately three inches, <clears throat> the standard deviation for the US. And I'm not sure about the Netherlands, but let's uh, pretend that say it's six inches. So if I then think about uh, the distribution of heights, and I say, well, within one standard deviation of the mean, that puts me between five foot six and six foot, then, uh, okay, so that is going to be, knowing some statistics, that's going to be approximately 68% of the population, so more than half. So if I go to the Netherlands, uh, then I can expect uh, about more than half of the population would to be between five foot six and six foot six inches tall. So now I know that on average these males in the Netherlands are taller than the US, um, but I do see that it's possible for me to meet people that are shorter than me and not just taller but much taller than me. So I have a better understanding or idea of this distribution of the heights of males in both the Netherlands and in the US. Okay, now let's talk about the mode. So the mode is one of the easiest um, measures of center to find. It's not sensitive to extreme values, uh, and it's the only measure that we can use for categorical data or qualitative data. So I expect to see these uh, advantages and disadvantages on your lecture notes when you turn them in. Uh, the disadvantages is that it uses only part of the data or some of the data. And, and so let's look at some examples. This first data set 
we see that the value that occurs the most is a 2. So the mode is 2. Now for the second data set, we see that the 0 and then the 4. So there's two modes here. So we have the 0 and the 4 are both modes here. Okay. Now let's look at this other data set. I've got uh, there is no mode for this data set. All the values occur once. So no mode exists. And the same is true for example 4. There's no mode because all of the uh, values occur twice. So there's no one uh, or two or three values that have uh, more repetition or occurrences than the others. So there is no mode. All right. So you see that the mode uh, may involve one or two or even three values, or there may not be a mode. So it's easy to find, but it only uses some of the data. Now let's talk to, about the median. If we put the data in order, uh, then we can uh, find the median. And half of the data is below the median, half the data is above the median, if it's put in order. So the procedure here is that we order the data from smallest to largest. If it's an odd number of values, the median is going to be in the middle. If it's an even number of values, the median is the average of the two middle values. Let's look at an example here. So here we have five data points. So I can mark off a value from both the top and the bottom, and I'm left with the median of six. So median for this example is six. Now, for this data set, I have one, I can mark off two, and I'm left with uh, two values in the middle. So this is an even number of values. Here n was 5 in example 1, and now n is 6, and the median is going to be the average of these two values in the middle. 8 plus 10 divided by 2 is going to be 9. So the median can be a value that's not even in the data, okay? But it is always going to be near the middle of the data. The advantage is that it's not sensitive to extreme values. If I replace the 14 with a 100, it doesn't change the median, okay? So it's not sensitive to extreme values. But it only uses one or two values at the most. If it's even, it's going to use two of the values. If it's an uh, odd number of values, it, there's, it's only going to use one, all right? If you have a large data set, it's handy to know that you can find the location of the median using this formula. Take n plus 1 divided by 2. So in example 2, we have n equals 6, so 6 plus 1 divided by 2, that's 7 over 2, which is 3.5. So it tells us it's halfway between the third and fourth value, and that's halfway between 8 and 10, so it's 9. So please make sure that this um, is adequately noted on your notes. All right, now let's talk about the mean. It's one of the most common measures of center. And the advantage is that it uses every value of data, um, every one of the values of data gets used. It's also reliable, meaning, relatively speaking, meaning that if you take the means of uh, several samples from uh, the same population, that the values that you get should not vary very much. But the disadvantage is that it's sensitive to extreme values. Everybody should know how to calculate the mean. So you, you add up all the values that you have, and you divide by the number of values that you have in the data. So for the sample statistic x bar, we sum up all the values of x, that's the values of the data, and divide by little n, which is our sample size. For the population, parameter mu, this is mu, then we still add up all the values, but now we divide by capital N, which is the population size. So let's do that for our first example here. So um, for this example, x bar is equal to 27 divided by 9. There are 9 uh, values here, so that's 3. Here, 
we have the same nine values except I've switched out a 5 and a 100. So now the sum of the values is 122. I'm sorry. And uh, let's see, I added. Did I add or did I? 3, 6, 9. So I added um, 3, 6, 9. So there's 10. Okay. So I changed this. So there are uh, 10 values here. And let's add them up real quick. So I've got 3, 5, 7, 10, 13, 17, 27. Yes, so I've got 27 divided by 10, and that's 2.7. And now I have 122 divided by 10, and that's 12.2. So I change one number from 5 to 100. So an extreme value changed the mean all the way from 2.7 to 12.2. And notice that none of the data is anywhere near 12. Whereas here, uh, data's, there's quite a bit of data around 2.7 near that value. But none of the values are near 12.2. It's way between uh, 5 and 100. All right, so the mean is a very common measure. But if you have skewed data or data with extreme values, it might not be your best measure of the center. Now let's look at a modification of the mean. So in those situations where we may have some extreme values and we still want to use the mean, we may use what we call the, the trimmed mean. So we're going to trim k percent of the values from both ends of the data. So in other words, we have to put the data in order from smallest to largest, we need to calculate k percent of the values. We do that by taking the k percent divided by 100 and times n, all right? And then we're going to discard that number of values from both the top and the bottom. So let's calculate the mean, and then we calculate the mean on the remaining values. We just pretend like those other values we threw out don't exist. So let's calculate a 5% trim mean on this data n is equal to 19, so I need to calculate 5% of 19 is equal to 5%, which is 0.05, times 19, which is 0.95, and that's, I'm going to round that to 1. So that means that I'm going to throw out the lowest one and the highest one, not just the highest one. I have to be fair about this. If I'm going to get rid of this one extreme value, I need to get rid of the smallest value, too. To, to balance it. So then I'm left with um, 17 values. So x bar, and I'm going to call it a t, just so I know that it's trimmed. I'm going to add up those values. It's 94 divided by 17 into three decimal places. That's 5.529. And that very much looks like it's in the middle of the data. And there's a lot of data values that are close to that. So now let's, gonna t let's talk about the weighted mean, and this is very important to students. So with students, we, uh, we give grades, and so the grades are weighted. So W is the weight, and X is the data value. And so if we're doing grades, let's say that you want to know your grade in statistics prior to the final exam. So you haven't done the final exam, so we don't have 100% of the grades yet. We have our homework, which is worth 20%, and a grade of 92. So what we do, the easy way to do this is to make a table. And you look at the formula, and it says you need to multiply x times w, and then sum them up. That's what this sum, this is a summation sign. It means to add. And when I see that, I think in my head, sum of. Okay. And so we need to take x times w, add them together, and then divide by, I missed a summation sign, this has a sum of W down here. Okay. So, if I add up the uh, sum of the W, so you see I, I've written the 92, the different grades, along here, and then I wrote their weights. There was three tests, each at 12%. So all three of these have 12%, and then a participation grade. So I add up the Ws, and this adds up to 70 um, 6 percent. And when I multiply, remember that a percentage 
is a decimal place. So I'm taking 0.2 times 9.2. So I get 18.4. I get 12.0, uh, 10.2, 11.52, 19.6. And these add up to 71.72. And then the weighted average, or x bar w, is equal to the sum of x times w divided by the sum of w. And that's 71.72 divided by 0.76. Remember to move the decimal place two points with your percentages. And this gives us an average of 94.368. And so the grade going into the final exam would be a 94.368 to three decimal places. So um, I hope these uh, ways of measuring the center of the data or of a distribution make sense. Please scan in your lecture notes by midnight of the due date for this um, video. Make your notes neat for you. And please update your formula sheet with some of the formulas that we have here. If you have questions, please uh, visit my virtual office hours or email me. I'll see you next time. Until then, think statistics.